Good day dear chess lovers, Zordon here and in today's video I want to take a quick look at a brilliant chess miniature played between two little known American chess players. Donald Griffith is playing against Kevin Hobbs. This game was played back in 1982 in St. Paul, which is a city in Minnesota. Griffith opened up with e4 to which Hobbs answered with c5. The good old Sicilian defense is on the board and then Hobbs goes for neither variation. Bishop g5, we have this main line, f4, b5, black is hurrying to expand on the queen side and e5 trying to make use of the pin, but of course you can't do much, this is a well-known theory with queen c7, black is neutralizing the threat and now if, for example, uh, e takes f6, then black is announcing a check from e5 and is winning back the piece. This is also playable, but in our game, after queen c7, white played queen e2 protected the pawn, still keeping the knight under attack and preparing castling queenside. Black knight retreated and white castled queenside. Bishop b7, uh, well, this queen takes e5 is not good. In the end of the day, there is this knight takes e6 move with a mating threat, that's why black played bishop b7 and queen g4, white is now hitting on e6. Uh, queen takes e5 and bishop takes b5. So earlier we had this position in a game played between Mikhail Tal and an amateur chess player. Tal played that game during a chess simul. I have already covered it where the magician from Riga chose the continuation starting with bishop d3. Let's take a quick look how that game ended. Knight f6 was black's answer, takes, takes, and then Tal played rook e1. And after black attacked Tal's queen, Tal went for this knight sacrifice on e6. Uh, the queen is, of course, untouchable because of this check. Uh, black played bishop e7, trying to neutralize the threat from the e-file. Tal played bishop takes b5 check and then forced the resignation with knight c7 check. The link I will pin in the comment section. For the detailed analysis, check out the link, please. Uh, but after queen takes e5 in our game, we have an interesting looking bishop takes b5 move. Black accepted the bishop sacrifice and there comes the knight, knight takes b5. Donald Griffith is playing very aggressively and I would have liked to know more about this chess player. h5, black is attacking white queen but this is bad, too bad. So it turns out that up to this point black is doing ok, we have more or less an equality, but yeah under a terrible pressure black collapsed, h5 is losing, better was knight f6. If bishop takes f6, then g takes f6, and black is managing to put a tough resistance. So yeah, definitely in a position like this, an exchange of queens is in black's favor. But in our game we have h5, and now let's see what's the problem with it. How to proceed, that's the question. Ready? Here we have it, we have knight c7 check, white is forcing the knight sacrifice, after which there comes the second knight, knight takes e6. Uh, of course, white queen is untouchable because of this checkmate, black played queen e5, and this time another knight sacrifice landed on c7. First knight c7 check, and then the other knight came, and yeah, this is amazing, guys, so... Uh, once again, Blake is forced to accept that knight sacrifice, but now we have an open e-file. Queen e2 check, knight e5, and now what? We need to deflect this queen. Yes, yes, let's go for it. Queen takes e5 check. After Black is accepting the sacrifice, White is announcing an opera mate, something which happened in the game, and there we have it. We have a wonderful opera mate on the board. The bishop together with the rook are killing the enemy king. A very, very fierce attack, and uh, the attack was pretty uh, accurate, you know, I really like this game. Feel free to share it with your friends as well and in the end a chess puzzle where the task is to win with the black pieces. There is even a forced mate in 5 and as usual we'll wait for your answer in the comment section.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.